we'll kind of just fell apart for you guys there after I went to 13 to 7. I mean, I mean Kyle Mon and guys running was really determined, but things just fell apart from there. Where did things get unraveled for you guys? Well, you know, we, we never caught rhythm at all. I never felt that we were in the rhythm during the course of the game. Uh, on offense, this is um, game two, but we kind of kind of spit and spat, you know, get the ball in the red zone, come away with zero points, um, you know, didn't stop the run. I mean, if you don't stop Rutgers' run game, I mean, you got your hands full the rest of the game. They can control the clock, and, you know, they got very physical runners, and there's times where um, – Thought we did good against the run. There's times where we did not. Most of the times we did not. You know, so uh, start playing behind the, the scoreboard, playing against the clock. You know, um, you know we had to throw the ball, kind of got ourselves out of rhythm bad. A lot of drop balls out there today. So uh, we got to address the mindset of our football team. But did something kind of just break? It, it still, despite all that, it's 13 to seven after that touchdown, and then something just broke. What broke down? From there. You tell me. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. you know, um, we'll, we'll figure it out mm -hmm. as a football team. I know that. You know, when you say we broke, I thought we came out that halftime uh, and uh, moved the ball decently on offense. Uh, I didn't think that was broken. You know, we didn't get ourselves in the end zone. Uh, scored late in the third quarter. You know, gave ourselves a chance to, you know, you know, uh, you know, really put some points on the board and really gain momentum. We didn't take advantage of that. You know, um, but this is not a broken football team. You know, we'll figure things out. And, you know, this, this team does not have quit in them. You know, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Sam, what was the explanation when they rescinded that P.I. in the end zone? You know, I'd rather not make a comment on that. The referees are doing their job. I mean, they're trying to make the right call, you know, and uh, it is what it is. You can't get it back. With the offense, it's the second straight game where you guys kind of got off to a slow start, kind of three and outs and a lot of miscommunications. Can you talk about Kind of the slow starts you guys have been having on offense the first two games? Yeah, I, you know, uh, quarterback got hit early. You know, uh, not a whole lot of sacks, but I mean, he took some hits out there. You know, uh, our receivers got to do a much better job versus man coverage. Again, dropped the ball quite a bit today. You know, uh, we got to address that issue. Um, you know, these are all correctable things. You know, we just got to get back to work and, and fix them. You talked about your running backs needing to run through contact more. Looks like you might have something there with Jaquez Smith. How do you think he... Yeah, he, was a, he was a spark for us. I mean, he was the one piece that I thought was moving the sticks, keeping us on the schedule. You know, um, again, you know, we we, uh, we play players that are going to make plays for us, and you can't knock his production today. You know, there's times where he looked really, really good, so he'll play some more for us for sure. You're starting to see a little bit more from him over the last couple of weeks where he just kind of felt like he was ready to get some touches out there? Yeah, he's, he's really showed the moment he got here. You know, just you know, getting his feet wet. You know, see what he was going to do, see how he was going to respond. Obviously, you know, a uh, true freshman coming out of high school, didn't know what the game day demeanor was going to be for him. He just proved to me that he was ready, so we'll, we'll, we'll get him ready to play. Can you talk about, um, with the no-huddle offense, you had a couple of legal substitutions. Can you just talk about the what you guys did again with the no-huddle offense and how to, you know, get better from there? Uh, practice. You know, um, you know, it's not all on the players. I mean, coaches got to get better, too, you know, so... You know, uh, some of those substitution issues both on both sides of the football, you know, I think we can get the call quicker to our football players and allow those guys to settle in and, and lock into the execution of the play call. And, you know, we just got to get those plays to them a little sooner. When did you know you'd be without Diego at, at left tackle? And then when did you know that? It was a game day decision. You know, mm -hmm. we just, you know, we tried to get him ready. He tried to fight through to get ready. And, you know, it just wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to. Could, today, so. Is it something he could work through to eventually play next yeah, week? Yeah, I think he's going to be fine for next week. And how do you think Luke did at, at, uh, at left tackle there? Uh, I have to wait and see. Yeah. You know, we had some penetration on, on all sides of the defense, to, uh, offensive line today. Um, hey, you got to give credit to Rutgers. I mean, they, they, they played hard on defense. They played a full four quarters. I mean, they kept themselves on schedule on offense. And defense, they made plays. You know, so, you know, we can't, um, can't knock and take away from Rutgers' preparation. When it was 13 to nothing um, on that fourth down, PI, non PI, you could have gone for the field goal there. Did you have considerations relatively early in the third quarter? Uh, you know, going into this game, I, I do uh, trust analytics to some point. You know, uh, I knew we were going to be in a dog fight, underdogs, and uh, not getting a whole lot of rhythm. I didn't think three points was going to be enough for us to, to, to be competitive with Rutgers. So uh, I'll make that call again for sure. Some of those miscommunication plays also had a couple drop balls, delay a game. Yeah. 
How much of that like was because of the environment? Like it sounded more like a rock concert out there at some points in the game. Uh, I don't think the environment had anything to do with it. You know, we just got to lock in and focus, and um, we didn't do a good job of that today. You mentioned That's EJ fun, getting fun. hit. Do you think it, it impacted him a little bit, getting hit a, maybe more than? I think any quarterback who's getting hit as often as our quarterback got hit today has some kind of an impact on him. He's a tough kid. You know, he kept playing. And, you know, even down to that last drive, the ball kept moving down the field. And, again, we didn't find a way into the end zone. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that plays a part to it. But uh, we'll rebound from that, and he'll be just fine. You talked about after week one, what you learned about your team. What do you now learn about your team now two weeks We're going to find out, really. You know, um, I thought this football team came out and, um, you know, played hard in spots. There's some good things that we can take from this. And there's some really, you know, really um, – not so good, you know, decisions that took place on the football field. I mean, we'll really find out who we are. You know, will this team pull together? Will they separate? I bet on us. We're gonna, we're gonna pull together. We're gonna learn from this, and you know, everything that we put out in front of us is still there for us to go get. You know, we we, we uh, lost this ball game. You know, we got more. Thank goodness, and uh, I can't wait to see this team respond. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you.